it is Monday morning. And for us, it means that it is Mission Monday. And as always, I thank you for, for being with me today, for joining me. Uh, but more than anything, it's a time that you give God that I that I, that is mostly appreciated. So as always, let's begin with prayer. You know, bow ahead and say, Lord, use me today. Well, let your word go forth. Open the hearts of those who will hear your word today. Allow it to penetrate deep into the depths of their soul that they may become more and more like you. We thank you today for what will go forth. In the name of Jesus that we pray, amen, amen. You know, last week I, I was uh, I was listening to a podcast, an interview with a, with a music director. And the host asked him about his start. And he shared that when he was in college, his professor asked him what he wanted to do. Uh, he told the professor that that he wanted to make a lot of money. Uh, the professor told him that uh, most likely after graduation that he would make uh, $250,000. He in turn told the professor that he was going to make a million dollars. The professor asked him how. He told the professor that he, the professor, was going to teach him how. And then the professor asked him this question. So what does McDonald's sell? The music director answered, hamburgers and Big Macs. The professor responded, no. The director then looked at him and asked, well, what, what does he sell? The professor response was consistency. I tell you today that no matter where you are, Orlando, Martha's Vineyard, in Cannes in the south of France, Amsterdam, the Netherlands, or even in Africa, wherever the golden archers are found, you can expect that the Big Mac will taste virtually the same. Two all beef patty, special soft lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Yes, the sauce. Uh, McDonald's would say that the special calls, it's, it's unbeatable, tasty, Big Mac sauce registered. No one hand can ever reproduce that sauce like that consistently. And it is consistency that has enabled McDonald's to sell over 300 billion hamburgers worldwide, which means for folks like around us, that means 75 hamburgers per second every day, generating over 23 billion in revenue on an annual basis. This is not a McDonald's commercial or anything like that, but it is about consistency. And so when I go back to the music director who says when it finally registered in his mind what was being, what consistency really meant, he knew then that he had to change, that he had developed a life of consistency. The music director's name is Master P. Today, he has an estimated worth. He's, he's achieve what he said he wanted to achieve, what he told his professor. He has an estimated worth of over $350 million. In this, it says that no matter who you are, what your job is, what services you provide, whether or not you are a husband or a wife, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, a nurse or a doctor, a mayor, a president, Consistency is the key to our being successful. Sometimes that means when the truth hits us and that we're not being consistent, that we must avail ourselves to grow and change, that we must be prepared to evolve to meet the task. You know, it's really not that much different when we think about God. When we look at our relationship with God, we need to know that God expects for us to be consistent in our relationship with him. And yes, the key to having a su successful relationship uh, with God means being consistent in our spiritual growth, which fuels our trust, our faith, which strengthens our walk in Christ. In the Old Testament, as well as in the New Testament, the Bible encourages us to be steadfast 
to be consistent in our relationship with God, to keep our eyes looking ahead to God and not to be caught up consistently looking back at our past. But one thing we must know and we are true to understand that when God, God has released us from our past, when he forgave us, it is said that he threw it all away from us. So we now begin to focus on our future, a future with him. Steadfastness in God is an attitude of trust in God, even in the face of difficult circumstances. And I will tell you in life, you will have difficult circumstances. So the old preacher would say, if you haven't experienced them yet, keep living. You will. Circumstances will change. But circumstances are not, as I'd said before, not meant to stop us, but they're meant to challenge us. They're meant so that we can grow. They're meant so that we can understand that it's time maybe even to take a different course, but they're meant so that we can become stronger and evolve, almost like having a resume and a spiritual resume and God builds more and more inside of us. We begin to grow more and more. And then he begins to have more of that trust in us and our ability to take on the responsibilities and tasks that he's got in store for us. Good deeds he's given to us. We must be prepared, must be ready. Steadfastness is one of those things that will keep us and get us ready. That means that it encourages us to, to have that immovable faith, always abounding in the work of the Lord, you know, the word steadfast really appears in the Bible nearly 200 times, followed by the one word you can imagine, and that word is love, which is one thing that we can always know with 100% certainty about God, that his love for us is steadfast, just as his faithfulness is to us. And when I turn in the scripture, I was looking at James 1 and 12, and it says that blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, that he will receive the crown of life. Hebrews takes another slant out in Hebrews 10 and 35. It says, so do not throw away your confidence. Your consistency in God will be rightly rewarded. And as we strive to be consistent, Peter tells us, he says, we are to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord uh, and uh, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to glorify him both now and forever. We're looking at another translation of that in the, uh, the new uh, international reader's version. First time I've ever used this one. It says to grow in grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Get to know him better. Give him glory both now and forever. I will say to you that getting to know him, getting to know Jesus, getting to know God better means that we are to dig our roots deep into the depths of his word. There may be times when we will need to reach into the farthest depths of his grace. Sometimes life can get complicated and sometimes life, as said before, can get very challenging. And sometimes not so much challenging. Sometimes the doors and the windows of heaven are open for us and we still need to be deeply, firmly, deeply embedded into his word, deeply embedded into the gifts that he has given to us. We need to be deeply embedded there because we need to ensure that we are still serving him the way he would have us to serve him, giving to his people and serving his people. Knowing that at the end, that he will get the glory for all that we do and say. We must grow. The apostle Peter always makes it clear that our spiritual growth and our progress in our Christian walk must be continuously matured in grace and, and even an ever-increasing knowledge and, and understanding of Jesus. Growing in God's grace is, is not an accumulation of facts. 
and, and information about uh, our Lord Jesus. As I say, it is not a Google download, but it is a day-by-day -day transformation of our lives as we increasingly want to be more like Jesus in our disposition and in our character. And I say sometimes we're challenged that way. Even as I was on the highways yesterday, and coming back down I-4, coming to that merger of 48, and you know the traffic's gonna cluster, you know people are gonna be coming over in front of you. And when it did, when somebody did cut over in front of me at the very last instance, watching me apply brakes, hoping that no one would hit me from beside, that disposition of being like Jesus was somewhat challenged. But I am here to tell you that I did pass the test. There was only one Lord forgive me in that time. But we ought to have that spirit. We ought to walk in that spirit. We ought to know that the spirit and truth is there. And, 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 and that the Holy Spirit is leading us. And we continue to allow that to take place. It says the spiritual growth is ongoing. Uh, and it requires a consistency in our process to become more and more like Jesus. But I also tell you too, is that uh, as we do, as we continue to get to grow, there are seasons in our lives when we're challenged, I don't know, but we must remain consistency, consistent with that, for it implies that we're living according to the will of our Lord, the will of, of what he has asked us to do and who he has asked us to become. Consistency can be challenging. And we must know that sometimes we must face that truth and know that we must be ones that are willing to change. We must be ones that are willing to grow. And so as I bring this session to a close, a Christians, I just want you to know this. At the end of the day, we mentioned before, we talk about the reward. It is our hope to spend eternity with God in heaven. So we need to live a consistent Christian life characterized by holiness and righteousness. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Bow your hands if you will, close your eyes. Dear Father, we open this prayer asking you to be with those people that are in Maui. My heart is broken as millions are because in that city of Lahaina, my wife and I walked those streets many times. She shopped in those shops. And I'm certain that we probably spoke to many of the people who in those shop owners and managers. We know the devastation is great, Lord God. But we also know that nothing is greater than the love and grace that you have for us. Continue to walk with them, Lord God. Provide them. And when needed, Lord God, carry them. Lord, we pray for our leaders as always. Lead and guide them. Order their steps. Be with the nurses and doctors and caregivers, Lord God. Strengthen them. Encourage them to love on those as you would love on them. To our first responders, to our fire, our police, stand with them. Be their shield, Lord God as they go toward danger, toward the flames. Be with the military, help them remain strong and courageous, no matter where they are, what they may encounter, Lord God. And certainly, Lord, help those in need of a blessing. Answer the prayers of your people. But Father, let us not forget to thank you for the prayers that you've already answered for granting our wishes, for opening the doors. Lord, we thank you for protecting our children and our teachers and, and bus drivers as they return to school. Lord, we ask that you bless your people who receive your word and are consistent in wanting to be like you. Bless us, O Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And as always, I want to remind you uh, that I'm here for you, to pray with you, to pray for your family and friends, to let you know that that you don't walk alone. In a few moments, my contact information is going to pop up on the screen. 
uh, we ask you to use it. Also, if you don't want to call me directly, we also have a prayer wall where you can post your prayer on our prayer walls. I'll be available to do that as well. Listen, I just want everyone to know that I love you. In God's name, I love you. So everyone, have a great Monday. Have a blessed week. Go with God and walk in his love. God bless.